with the Louisville Free Public Library. In 2017, we launched the Collider Artist in Residence program. Randy Gray is our March 2021 Virtual Collider Artist in Residence. We are excited to welcome Randy back as he was our in-person artist for July of 2018. Randy is a Louisville cartoonist and we hope you will join him for his live program. Hi, I'm Randy and today we're going to be talking about some secrets to leveling up your art right now. And we're going to talk about line of action, which will help you make your characters more expressive and give them more life. Um, and we're going to talk about uh, making mistakes and how making mistakes isn't quite what you think it is. And we're going to talk about using reference and how using reference is not cheating. It's just a way to help you to build your imagination so they can draw from your head. And a lot of some of the misconceptions that we think about when we think about our art. Now what I'm gonna do is go over a few tips and tricks that it will bring your drawings to the next level. And these are a few things that I learned over the years that have helped me. Um, and also with it being Women's History Month, I'd like to highlight a few female artists that really influence my work and for you to watch out for it, it'll help your work. And I am always really emphasizing shapes whenever I'm teaching about art. And when you see a drawing book, a lot of times you will see a circle with this line through it, kind of like a tennis ball wrapped in rubber bands. And that represents a head shape. And then a body shape is this cylinder. And if you want to level up your art, you need to learn how to structure a body with these shapes. Because if you understand the way these shapes are put together to make a human body, you can move them and manipulate them any way you want. And even if you want to draw a character out of a book or from your, a TV show, if you start with this, you can fill it in. The other tip that I learned is to draw light and then gradually make your lines heavier and darker. So start, and I like to use a mechanical pencil because mechanical pencils are kind of thin and brittle. So it helps you, if you can draw with this and not break the lid, it'll help you to draw a lot, draw a lot lighter. So you just draw a cir circles, or squares. And using this here, so we start out with kind of the bones, the skeleton of our character. And this could be anyone, but since I've drawn pretty light, and then when you go back in, you can make your lines a little heavier, and then it'll help you kind of settle on what lines you want to make. And oftentimes, when young artists are drawing, they want to just skip to the end and just start drawing the outlines of the characters. But the professionals will usually start with this structure because, again, it can go with any character you draw. And the purpose of this line down the center, it helps you know what the center of the face is. Let's see, it's, so it could, if the, if the line is going this, this cross line is the eye line. So it's going up, that means the person is looking up. And wherever the center is, 
this this line shows which direction the head is going. So this guy, his eyes would be here, and eye length apart, and his mouth, his nose would be about here, and his mouth would be here. And if he's looking down, that line would be going down. And again, it's kind of curved to, to show that the head is a curved shape. It's not a flat shape, it's more of a sphere. And if that line goes down, it shows that the eyes are looking down. We'll go back to our character here. And a lot of people think that drawing is just a talent that people are born with, but uh, drawing is, is a skill like any other, playing basketball or playing baseball or or even being a, a bodybuilder. It's something that you have to practice and work at. And doing these things like this, the more you do it, the easier it gets. And then you can start to skip some of these steps. Not because you're taking short, shortcuts, but it's already built in your memory and built in your brain. And so your mind has already started to do these things. And I know sometimes it could be boring doing all the little circles and cylinders, but if you get used to it, it's not so bad. Another tip is to always keep a sketchbook. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. I will pick up any any kind of sketchbook. It could be, it could have lines, it could be have not lines, big or small. If you want to keep one around with you whenever you're traveling or on the bus or in the car, a small one is good. And then you could just kind of draw things whenever you get the ideas. And another big tip that I learned is to use reference. Reference is something that you look at to help you understand what it is you're drawing. You don't have to always draw from your imagination. There's nothing wrong with looking at a picture of a person or a picture of the character you're drawing to get a hint or just to help you make it better. Even if you're, if, even if you're someone who's been drawing a long time, you'll always make your drawings better by using a little bit of reference. It's not cheating. Even I was guilty when I was a young artist. I used to think that if you couldn't draw it out of your head, it means you're not good enough to draw it. That's not true at all. Because sometimes when you start to draw from your imagination and you limit yourself to that, you might have some developed bad habits. So if you're looking at something like use your friends, or you could just look at a mirror to see how an expression is or how an, when one arm goes up or one arm goes down when you're running. It helps you to see the thing as it really is. And once you start to learn to see things as they really are, you can translate it to the page. And the more you do that and the more you practice in your sketchbook, the better your drawings will be. And I really like the, the art series, or the book series, which are in the library, Guts and Smile. Those are really popular books. And Raina Telgemeier is the artist and 
the artist and the writer of those books, and she has a really, really good sense of shape and expression, and she uses her own life experiences in her work. And you can look at her artwork and you can see how she, her shapes are simple and her drawings aren't, re they're, car they're cartoony, but they're, they're not really complicated, but they always tell the story. You can always see what everyone's thinking and the expressions. Are robbing there. Okay. Let's... Another tip is to use line of action, and this is a big one. And line of action is a line that you can think of it as your spine. And this helps your drawings to be more expressive and more alive. Because a lot of times, I'll see artists when they're drawing a character, they'll kind of draw the guy standing straight up. He'll just kind of be standing here. You know, let's say, if it's an anime character, he'll have great big eyes and then big hair. If we take this character and we give him a line of action, now we know he's doing something, he's moving, he's expressive. And you combine the line of action with the structure of the shapes. This will be a big guy, so he'll have big arms. Again, our circle and our line. And don't af be afraid to make your drawings a little messy. That's what a sketchbook is for. Mess up, play around, have fun. Anytime you open your sketchbook and start drawing, it doesn't always have to be a finished pretty picture. It can just be something that you're learning from. It takes a, a lot of messed up, messy drawings to get to the point where you're making nice drawings. Again, that's even with seasoned professional artists. So when you use reference, I'm not using any reference here, but these are poses that I've seen before, so they're locked into my head. But that takes a while to get to the place where you kind of have these poses already in your brain. And whatever your favorite characters are, or if you're gonna invent your own characters, and you combine all this knowledge and all the things you've been practicing, you will see your art start to get better. but it does take practice. And not only practice, but practicing the right things.
Now I draw pretty fast because I'm not worried about making mistakes. I might make a mistake as I go, I'll just draw over it. It's, it's good to have an eraser, but don't make the eraser something that you're chained to. It's okay to mess up. Even though I'm saying mess up, don't think of a mess up as a mistake that's messing your drawing up. Think of it as something that you're learning from. So just remember those things and keep in mind that you're always learning. You never stop learning as an artist. You never stop growing and you can always level up as long as you keep practicing the things that the pros use.